Okay. Happy to be here this evening. Very rarely I join Wednesday night, but these monks were pushing me so hard today. <laughs> you know, tomorrow morning I'm traveling again. I was trying to get, have a break. I, you know, Amita said, no, you have to give a talk tonight. <laughs> So that's okay, I'm happy, you know, so anyway. Um, so uh, it's very interesting, uh, when I'm traveling around the world, uh, now I have lots of people, uh, people know me, I know them. So now uh, we are in the social media. So that means lots of people messaging me, emailing me, you know, so many ways people try to uh, contact me. And also now I cannot respond to all those people, uh, how much I'm doing. Now I have like a worldwide group called the Bhante teams and they all can get into my social media pages, you know, sometimes they are answering for me. And some situation, um, you know, I had to answer, you know, so I watch everything very closely. So anyway, uh, sometimes I get good, uh, appreciation messages, which is wonderful, right? Sometimes I get questions. Sometimes I get a whole book, people writing <laughs> a lot of long messages. Sometimes very short. Um, Sometimes they don't like me. Some people, you know, people are always thinking everybody likes Bhante Sujata, but no. <laughs> Some people don't like me. So that means when I'm using the social media, I can see all my life is there, my life practice is there, my acceptance, my letting go, and everything is there. It's a perfect place for to practice. And why? Whole world is there most of the time. <laughs> okay? And so that means people are interacting. So what I realize doesn't matter for me what is happening there. So I just do my work and my responsibility being a monk for the world. Recently, um, I get uh, one uh, Facebook message uh, because I'm doing lots of charities. Uh, so, so many uh, charity events every year is requested by people, but I cannot fulfill everything. But I'm very selective, I pick certain things, but one person keep asking me one project, but I cannot do and much about it. He was so mad about it. Why? I do a lot, but I didn't do his request. There are so many reasons to say no. <laughs> and so anyway, that's the one incident. Then other, uh, my recent experience, I got a message. That's what I'm going to talk tonight. I got the message about meditation. So I can see this country is very goal-oriented and also detail-oriented, yes, which is totally fine. It is a wonderful thing. And so this message was, uh, one message, I'm so-and-so, I'm depressed, I have a lot of fear and anxiety, I need help, I want to learn meditation. Can you teach me? First question. Okay. The second question, how much you charge? Okay. Third question, how long I have to do it? The fourth question, can I hire you to do it? Can I hire you to do and teach me meditation? Now think about, I get those weird kind of questions all the time. So, then I said, I don't have a meditation factory. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not producing anything. And so all the questions not related to your meditation. <laughs> that was my answer. I said, all the questions you ask, it's not related to meditation. Okay? So, you know, can I see now why people in American people are goal-oriented and detail-oriented? They need information. Now we all are conditioned somehow to do our life every day. Go to work, condition. Do the family, conditions. Taking care of the children, condition. And also condition means all our habitual actions. 
whether they are good or bad doesn't matter so now then you are depressed and tired and exhausted and now they are looking for okay now i have to do meditation so then when you come to meditation whatever we call the you put the same form same technique into meditation that's why people are asking those questions now when you go to the store first thing you get your product whatever you want to get then what you check price you check the price why you check the price you want to know the price you know you can afford it so now you are condition your mind into that system now when you come to meditation how do you feel i want to check the price why everything is money here then you know one man said to me now i have a personal buddhist monk i want to hire you i said sorry sir you cannot you you can have me if you want to learn meditation but you cannot hire me that's the word he used i want to hire you so it's very interesting for me to see when people come to meditation what they are looking for then they want to know how much you charge how long you are practicing how and other question all these people how long is take to make me happy <laughs> now you know people ask those question maybe you had those question how long is make me to me happy and content and joyful or enlightened now think about in that is the way you understand your practice you all are fail with your practice therefore those baskets those containers those condition those habitual action if you want to use use for your everyday life but when you come to meditation leave everything in the showroom when you come to the temple keep in the showroom and walk into this person new born new person i know you have to go home around 8 o'clock i know that i will handle that or the, these will you know the monks you know they will handle that but you just come an easy open relaxed person then you can get the benefit from the meditation and so therefore there is no any monetary value to this practice when somebody asked me how much you loan time ago you know the even we were in the basement that time we are not on this building somebody asked me i want to learn how to meditate you know the, he, he saw something i'm posting you know you know the sharing in the community and i want to learn how to meditate i want to know how much you charge it's a very common american questions that time i'm good with you know i'm good now many years later i know how american people are talking now according to your behaviors without hurting to myself i change to otherwise i cannot survive here in this country now i know how to answer now but first time somebody like 15 20 years ago somebody asked me that question i feel so uncomfortable why i am not used to that kind of system when people come to the temple in sri lanka after we do the chanting before the chanting people don't ask me how much you charge for the chanting if they ask question we feel our chanting is not quality then i said to this man meditation there is no charge it is free of charge no charge then he said i don't want it then <laughs> that's what he said it is so annoying right i don't want it it is so cheap i don't want any cheap meditation i need something quality one of my friend started a company for the software for the nurses many years ago first time she was selling 99 dollars so you know like that you know how we are selling things nobody buying it nobody buying it now she is so disappointed so upset she worked so hard for this whole business now nobody buying my software 
then she was asking some wise person you know the business world what can i do then that person said okay 399 put that price and you know you know the promote it tomorrow right after that she became so rich she start the you know the you know big company then she started a couple of branches around the country now think about because of that condition that's how many people think so if you are comfortable with that i am fine my goal is today don't bring your meditation practice into that system the meditation practice our meditation whatever your meditation it is priceless then i said to that man my meditation practice is priceless because he is keep bringing the same question again and again and again then i said meditation is priceless there is no price for your practice how wonderful that can you see the power after when you say it is priceless you can see the power of your own mind you can see power of your own meditation practice then the, another distractive thing is when you do the meditation is time time is is a reality do you think time is real no time is not real it is man made we call conventional truth time is conventional time for our convenience not to suffer from it <laughs> but what we are doing now using the time for our convenience instead of having a comfort from it we are suffering from it that's why many people cannot meditate why they always worrying about the time in the beginning is okay if you want conventionally make yourself comfortable live your life put into time which is okay but after you practice for a while do you think you need that time i don't think so just be just be then so beautiful so and other other big weak weakness or condition i have seen here in this country people are guilt oriented too lots of guilt <laughs> i am not complaining about this country okay don't misunderstand this i love this country because this is my country too because if we don't address our own issues who is going to address this so that's why i am talking about myself too we are always thinking like that make sense now be careful with that be careful so if you put into that kind of time then you cannot meditate just be you are driving you know now i said the guilt oriented then people come to me and said i am not a good buddhist <laughs> sad face like this <laughs> and bante you know i am not good buddhist i ask why i skip my meditation every morning whole week i feel i have guilt about it now you are coming to the temple you are practicing meditation to bring more contentment into your life what is now happening you feel miserable do you think that's meditation no that's we call the miserable <laughs> so therefore don't call it meditation so then i said i said don't do meditation To, uh, that's what uh, my answer i said don't do it then he asked me do you do it i said no <laughs> i was so serious i said i don't do it <laughs> then he asked me what the heck you are doing for the last 40 years being a monk i said that's my meditation i said that's my meditation i didn't do it i just live with it sometimes i did the mistake sometimes i feel miserable sometimes i feel good sometimes i feel bad but i just live with it that's what we call the meditation just live with it don't try to change then there is another and also then then first part you feel guilt about it i didn't finish it i didn't do it how many people have those kind of problem feel bad 
right? All the time. So therefore, don't do that. Then next one is, you know, the, I said, you know, the guilt and then the time. So then people think when we do meditation, longer period of time, I'm good. More time I sit on the cushion, I'm the best meditation practitioner. I have seen cats are living so many hours sitting on the cushion. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they are meditating or not. I don't know that because I don't have the cat mind. Um, so, but I don't know, they are sitting hours. I have seen they are sitting on the meditation cushion even, hours and sleeping. Then we call they are good cats <laughs> or bad dogs. <laughs> we don't see that, how long they are sitting. So, therefore, how how much time you are using every day, how long you are sitting, if you are believing, that's my meditation, you are going to fail. Now we all understand quality or quantity. Now you all understand your quality is important. So therefore, spend some quality time. Not hour or hour and a half or three hours, doesn't matter. Then what will happen? If you are so attached to the time, this is the demon coming behind that time, then you are looking at other people, talking to your meditative friends. Oh, how long you meditate every day? Oh, I am doing, th you know, 10 minutes. Oh, I am doing 45 minutes. <laughs> so proud. <laughs> There's another problem. Then ego-related issues now. One time, I was doing a long time ago, I think maybe 15 years ago, I was doing a day retreat here. When I do the day retreat, there was a man, he went to a 10-day Vipassana retreat. You know those people going to 10-day silent in Rockford? You know, there's a Vipassana meditation center, it's a totally silent, which is wonderful. Then after that 10 days, he came back to the temple, we all are sitting here, we have an uh, afternoon discussion. So then different people are asking different questions from me, I'm answering them. Then um, he asked about the, how long he's practicing meditation and all those things. Then he said, you know, I really want to tell you something very interesting. I went to 10-day Vipassana retreat, totally silent. Then I said, wow, that's great, good for you. Then people were really, you know, appreciating it. Then he said, not just 10 days, I was sitting 8 hours per day. Then people are, wow, eight hours? Oh my God, I cannot sit even two minutes. You did eight hours, how wonderful. Now, now he's so happy why everybody's, you know, appreciated him. Then we are keep moving, you know, now think about, we are talking about the karma, for example, you know, that's our discussion. Now, no connection to our discussion. This man, second time, he raised his hand, he said, I did eight hours. I meet those people all the time. I did eight hours. Then nobody excited. Why? Excitement doesn't exist forever. If you are excited, then you get mad next time. The next minute you get mad. So that's what happening to people now. First time they are excited, now they are, oh, he's crazy or something. <laughs> maybe that's what maybe they think. Then the, then I was thinking myself, because I had to lead, I had to guide, that's my work here. Then I was thinking, definitely he is going to say it again. <laughs> I had to prepare myself. So I said, okay, continue the practice. Again, middle of nowhere. Again, he said, I did eight hours per day. I, I did well. Then I kind of looking at that, and who cares? You are eight hours. <laughs> That's what I said. I made my face so difficult sometimes. I just made my face. I said, who cares you are eight hours? That's it. No questions anymore. Everybody is so quiet. Then other people were thinking, I'm mad. I am not. That's the way I can handle that person. Then he said to me, I feel hurt. I said, that's my intention. To hurt you. Hurt your feelings. I said, it doesn't matter for me or them, you are eight hours. Maybe it doesn't matter for you even, that eight hours. I think being ten days silent 
eight hours sitting, only result you receive is your big ego. Now, what he's trying to prove to the world, I am better than you. I am better than you. My practice is better than you. Look, I am sitting better than you. People have those problems. That's why I am telling those things. You know, then sometimes people act like, you know, they are perfect meditation practitioners. Very nice. Then other people feel, oh, I cannot do that. So sometimes people say, oh, Bhante, I want to sit like you. Then I said, good luck. <laughs> One day you can, not now. One day I am doing meditation. During the meditation, I feel like this. Then I was, what's going on? I opened my eyes, like 60s, her age is maybe 60s. She's hitting her knee, <laughs> like this. I asked why. You know, the end of the meditation, I asked, what are you doing? Then she said, I'm so mad with my knee. I said, why? During the meditation, my knee started to hurt. Then I opened my eyes. Then I can see you are in front of me sitting like this. Then I felt horrible myself. I am not good meditation practitioner. I am trying so hard. I am fail. I cannot sit like Bhante. I want to sit like you. So I am mad. I am hitting my knee. Go down. <laughs> That's what she said, go down, I keep hitting my head. Now think about what is happening. I said, my friend, I am sitting like this whole my life. Age 11 to now, I am sitting as a monk like this. That's my punishment we got, they all know. That's our punishment, sitting is a big punishment we had, you know, it's so difficult. Then I said, you are totally wrong. Why you are wrong? Looking at me, you decide your practice. You are going to fail. Why? Forty years sitting like this, you know, I'm telling you the truth. I can sleep really well. <laughs> Nobody cannot see I am sleeping. <laughs> I said to her, I can sleep. They all know, that's why they are laughing. <laughs> Right? So, I can sleep like this, no problem. Therefore, during the meditation, open your eyes if you want to. But don't look at me. What you have to look at? Me? No. Look at your own mind. Look at your own thoughts. Look at your own emotions. How you feel. No need to hit your knee. No need to get angry with that. Just address it. If your knee hurt, Stand up. No need to suffer from it. Why? When you have those goal-oriented aim for meditation, you cannot do it. Therefore, meditation is not a job. It is not your job. Don't put into your job basket, my meditation, done, check. <laughs> That's how people think, you know, when we check our list, how, how wonderful, we feel good. Oh, six in the morning, I did my meditation, check. <laughs> then the day you cannot do it, you feel, you know, miserable. So therefore, don't put into the time, don't put into those conditions, situations, your practice. And also, don't make big aim. Oh, I have to focus on my breath, which is okay, if you want to. So, sometimes I call aimless meditation. Then somebody can say, that's another aim too. But aimless, don't focus on just one thing. Be an observer, be a silent observer. You are sitting, you can hear the birds are singing. Just listen to it. Don't make a big story. It's a black bird or it's a brown one, it's a colorful one, it's a beautiful one. No, no, just birds singing. Then what else? Whatever you hear, just hear it. Whatever you see, just see it. Whatever you feel, just feel it. Don't make a story. That's what we call meditation. So, way I understand, meditation is very simple. Putting into those world condition baskets or situations, now you feel this is difficult. 
Then end of the meditation, I feel tired. Why? You did the job. One lady went for a retreat in um, West Virginia. It's a meditation center, famous one. After seven days, so a week later, she returned. I asked, hey, Catherine, she's not here anymore. <laughs> I asked, Catherine, how is your meditation? Oh, I'm tired. I said, why? I did seven days. <laughs> then she said, I had to have a vacation now. She said, I did, I did seven day meditation. I need the vacation. <laughs> if after meditation, if you need the vacation, you need double vacation how you live your life. So therefore, don't put into those things. Why am these, I know these are very simple things, but greatly those conditions affect your daily meditation practice. Does it make sense? So therefore, today I'm asking, don't get into those problems. Enjoy your meditation. Have fun. Don't make a story for attachment. Any questions? Do, uh, you know, how do you feel about those things? You experience those things? I want to know. Our community. Hmm? Well, the, the attachments are part of our society. Mm -hmm. right? that, that's something we deal with on, you know, on a daily basis. It's mm -hmm. really a question of how do we want to uh, work through those conditions. Mm -hmm. Social conditions. Mm -hmm. And how we're managing them. Mm -hmm. uh, how we want to either think about them or Right. So what I am always thinking myself, being a monk, no matter we are unconditioned, still we are in a basket. Why? We exist. We are here in this world. But thing I am reminding people, you have to know I am in a basket. I am not attaching to this basket. Any time I can jump out. I can be free. That's how I live. All those time, rituals, dogmas, whatever things we are following, our family, you know, the rituals, whatever. Somebody made it. Somebody made it. Now we are thinking that's the, our ultimate truth. <laughs> That is not our ultimate truth. You know, there's a, you know, the funny story. I want to tell you that story. So there was a temple. These monks are meditating every evening. Now think about it, six o'clock. Every time when all the 10, 15 monks come to meditation, there's a cat at the temple running to the meditation hall. Then this cat is making meow, meow, meow. <laughs> now maybe cat thinks this is snack time. So then, it's so annoying. Every day, monks ring the bell, cat running to the meditation hall, and making meow. Now, you know, why cat is thinking the, uh, hear the bell? So, what happened one day, head monk, maybe like me, I think, and so, head monk said, you know, during this meditation time, go and tie this cat. Otherwise, it's so annoying. So, these little monks, I, I, do I say those things sometimes, right? <laughs> and so, so, right, you know, they know. So, and so then, um, you know, the head monk said, go and tie this cat. So now every evening, little monks, they ring the bell, then cat running to the meditation hall and making meow. Then head monk said, go and tie him. Now it's become a ritual. Now every day, Bell ring, cat come into the meditation hall, monk grabbing and tie him. Now, maybe head monk used to live maybe 70 or 80 years. Now, 80 years, you know, the, his monk life, they were tying the cat. Then what happened? Head monk passed away. Now there is no head monk. Now the next monk, you know, the, in, in the process, now he is the head monk. Now they ring the bell, everybody come because they are so used to the system. No, you know, then cat died. Okay, the cat died. Now they cannot practice meditation because meow. 
Then the second monk, in the process, then he said to the young monk, go and get a cat. <laughs> because without a cat, we, you know, they were thinking that is the meditation. If you want to do a good meditation, definitely we have to tie the cat. Now, without a cat, nobody cannot meditate. Then the th third generation came. Then the third cat came. Now, generation to generation, they buy a cat, ring the bell, every year, what they are doing, every day, they tie the cat. That's what happened to us. You know, therefore, I'm asking, whatever world created, respect to them. Otherwise, we cannot survive. They are going to crucify us, otherwise. <laughs> and so, you know, the respect to them, now in your deep awareness, understand that is not my ultimate truth. The way I train, they, these monks, we come from the same temple and the same teacher. The way we train, very traditional. That means we were in a box. That's the box we think this is the truth, this is the way it should be, this is the way we have to practice. That's how I used to believe. Then I was in Michigan, I used to believe the same thing. Why? It's the same culture. Then I came to Chicago, here. It's totally opposite. Wow, something crazy. <laughs> I was thinking crazy. This is crazy. This is not right. Then I felt I'm separated. Does it make sense? Now, what I, uh, whatever, whatever I believe, whatever you believe, I can say it's totally different. Then what I was trying to do, I tried to be you. <laughs> Then I had the so many problems. Then all the traditional people, what they are going to do now? I'm a bad monk. Why? He now Americanized. Now I have another problem. So finally, one day I realized, all are good. That tradition also good. This tradition also good. I can be in that tradition. I can be in this tradition. Oh, no tradition. <laughs> now what I do when I go to Sri Lanka, I am perfect Sri Lankan Buddhist monk. <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> when I come to America, I am crazy American Buddhist monk. <laughs> no, you are wonderful. You know, when I say crazy, it's a good way I am saying. You know, I, you know when they see it, they criticize it. When, they, when you see me, you feel appreciated. How wonderful is he is easygoing, approachable. That's what American people are telling. Sri Lankan people are telling he is stupid, he is crazy, he is a liar. You know, always criticizing. For me now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's how I do my practice. It doesn't matter. So I know those are conditions. Therefore, I don't attach to them. I just live with them. I enjoy my life. Therefore, I don't attach to... Anything. So somebody asked me why I made the blue lotus. You know, the blue lotus is growing the mud open to the world. That's the traditional answer. There's another part of the blue, you know, the lotus flower. The lotus flower open in the morning. All the bees come to get the nectar. They are making music and dancing so happy. <laughs> After day, you know, all day spending, when what happened? Sunrise, then sunset. Then what they have to do? They have to leave the flower. Why? In the evening, a flower gets close. If they are not leaving the flower, they will die inside the flower. Say, so, yeah, I'm always asking people, that's why we call the blue lotus. This is not a fun place. Sometimes we are going to kill you. <laughs> and so, you know, why if you get attached? You know, we are not going to kill you, but you are going to kill yourself. Therefore, don't. That's another problem I have. People get attached to me. So it's so challenging sometimes. Don't attach to the temple. Love your temple. Please give your donation. Don't forget about that. <laughs> and give your donation, make your pledge. But don't attach to it. Enjoy this temple and be respectful and take care of the temple. Just leave. Then you can call, you are living realistic life, not conditioned life. I think this is enough, otherwise I'm going to tell you so many things. <laughs>
I don't want to make you confused. So anyway, maybe um, next few weeks again, I'm somewhere else. I don't know. I cannot remember my whole schedule. I will see you again. So uh, few uh, few things I want to tell you. Now these days, uh, this corona outbreak is people, you know, very scary and uh, people always talking about this concern. But we, uh, temple, the monks, today we decided quick things. We are going to do something from whatever we can do, because a long time ago, during the Buddha's time, those kind of uh, situation happened. So then Buddha did some magic. <laughs> magic means something good. So then he did the, um, a special chant for that city to take care of and get this uh, uh, city uh, prosperous. We call the Sat- Ratana Shru- Sutra. Okay, Ratana Sutra. One time we did 50 days? Three months, right? Yeah, uh, 10,000 repetition we did a um, few years ago. Um, we are going to do it again, not 10,000 times. We are planning to do week. Okay, week means every evening we are starting 6 to 7. Okay, so uh, all the monks, whoever here, we are going to chant. What is the date? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. It's starting next Wednesday. So what we are suggesting, if you can make the determination that's, you know, the whole week, if you can come to the temple every evening, six to seven, and listen to the chant, you can chant with the monks. And some people are so familiar with their sutra, so therefore I'm inviting and bring that energy to protect whole world from this difficult situation. So whatever little things we do, it will affect. Okay, so next Wednesday we are going to start it. And the second thing uh, is, um, when I'm traveling, people always suggested me to uh, uh, make a traveling Buddha. <laughs> travel with you. Travel with Buddha. How about that? Travel with Buddha. So finally, I made a little traveling Buddha with you, like your altar in your pocket. You know, like I remember I was watching, um, uh, you know, the interview with uh, President Obama, uh, what he did. He grabbed a little tiny Buddha in his pocket. Then he said to the host, I always take in this Buddha with me. Why? It is so important to him to respect and be connected to himself. So he is always put into his pocket. So in that intention we made that. You in also you can make that intention to grow this Buddha nature within. So if you are interested and please take one, you can take it, keep it in your pocket and purse or your laptop bag. And wherever you go, you can take it. Even put into the purse, ladies, is a really good thing. It's a reminder. If you are really upset or mad, take the Buddha, keep in the dashboard, and looking at him for a while. So then it will have some, you know, little props, okay? If you want to get it, you can get it from the bookstore. The third thing, I am, you know, the, today I want to give my um, gratitude, my respect, my bow to this man, he's doing something wonderful to the community and the world, and he's running my YouTube channel and also the Temple YouTube channel. Bob, where's Bob? Okay, Bob, he's the one, you know, the taking care of all the Dharma recording here, the set up the system, and taking everything out and editing and doing and posting on the social media. So it's a big job. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for doing it. Okay.